So um, Dan Quinn sniffs around the open coaching opportunities in the league, does a couple interviews, and decides, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stay back in Dallas. Yet again, Dan Quinn returns to the Dallas Cowboys to be their defensive coordinator for another season. Apparently didn't like what he saw in, I don't know, Indianapolis or Denver or you name it. And Dan Quinn is back uh, in, in in the Dallas Cowboys locker room, in the Dallas Cowboys coach's office. He's going to be coaching up that defense again, which you got to think is a is a big win for the Cowboys this offseason after they let go of a bunch of assistants. So there it is. Dan Quinn's back. Brady's cousin, Dan Quinn. Back with the this Dallas was Cowboys. somewhere related down the line, right? Yeah, probably. That's Are you guys works. surprised by this? Yes. I th- I just assumed that he, he went through the interviews last year. He decided to come back. All he did was grow his resume and, and increase his stock this year with the way that defense played. And yet he just decides he wants to go back. I, maybe that's more telling of – Whatever the hell he saw from the interviews that like, he was on. It's just but. what's out there. I mean, you got to figure he saw the name tag on the door when he came into Denver's facility. You know, oh, there's Russ's office, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you just got to believe that he's looking at this this opportunity the same way we've been. I mean, same way we're discussing Sean Payton, right? And and to that point, Q, Q talked about it earlier. He's a defense coach. I'm not going to walk into a situation with Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson and and I don't have the support or or the understanding of what what my relationship would be with the GM. I'm not coming into one of those confrontational situations. Just not. You you already have established yourself where you're at. So outside of anything barring anything crazy taking place, he's going to continue to build that equity and and grow his opportunity to get another job the type that he would want to leave and take. I mean, he's taking the interview, so he's already uh, he's uh, he's allowed everyone to know he does want to be a head coach. So it's not that he's staying in Dallas because he, you know, he just would rather be in Dallas. He's staying in Dallas because of what you just said, Jonas. There's, there's something that he's seen and and he felt with the interviews that maybe were the most most attractive jobs to take, and he didn't want to do it. Too big of a risk. I think you have to be selective when it's your second time becoming a head coach. I mean, we, we tend to forget this man took a team to a Super Bowl. Yes, he did. And they – And should have won. Unfor- should have won, unfortunately. Blew one of the biggest leads we've ever seen in the Super Bowl. So, the biggest. Um and so we tend to kind of cast that off because of I remember what happened I was. afterwards. I was not but I look at it and, and I think as any candidate who's been a head coach once, you know how rare it is to get a head coaching opportunity the second time. And so you better pick the right one. You know, you better pick one where you can have a chance for success. The ownership, the general manager, the head coach is in alignment. And you feel good about everything going into it. Because at one point in time, this was a team that had the MVP at quarterback in Atlanta, had won an NFC championship, goes to a Super Bowl. And then once they were hit with adversity, things started to fall apart a bit in Atlanta. And it's frustrating because that was, uh, I mean, one, they were a really good team. It was fun to watch while he was there. But it's got to be frustrating to watch sometimes, you know, when people, when, when adversity strikes, People start looking for life vests. People start getting out pickaxes. Mm. And they're either looking to save themselves or they're looking to take the ship down. And and that could be a hard thing to be a part of. So he's wise. He's been there before. He knows, I think, what he's looking for or has a much better idea of what he's looking for this time around. And I just think he's got to be – he knows he's got to be careful about it because he's also not that old. I mean, he can coach for a long time. And, and I would say, look, coaching in Dallas – one part of me thought when I saw this that maybe and you guys tell me if this is wrong. Jerry didn't pull him aside and say, "Hey, now, hey, I want, I want you to listen to me." <laughs> now, if things don't work out with old well, Mr. Michael McCarthy. He's like, "I will. I'll just make you the head coach. So you stay here. We can elevate you into that spot. All right? You're my guy. Things don't work out. You're you're our guy here." 
I mean, they're kind of, I kind of feel like there's like a wink, nod, nod agreement there. Is there not? Yeah, Jerry was saying that out loud, basically, this offseason, which McCarthy had to answer for and got frustrated with. And then Jerry Jones tried to say, well, I don't know why that's even a discussion here. Uh, Mike McCarthy's our head coach. Dude, because you bring up these other names all the time. You were the one talking about Dan Quinn should be a head coach. So if he's saying that out loud, 100%, I believe he's had those conversations with Dan Quinn. Bob Mexico. Doors. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Live from Hawaii. Lose, lose Dan Quinn. What does the Dallas Cowboys have? I don't know. Micah Dak. Parsons. Yeah, Dak, Micah. I mean, and players. remember, some of us Cowboys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just they going to Mexico if they lose Dan Quinn right now. <laughs> I want me some glory hope. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't? Um, I mean, I know I, I know a lot of people are high on Kellen Moore, but they're uh, I mean, I don't I'm just, Well, you saw the most recent report. They said he might not even be back. Well. And and well. Hey. I mean, I mean that's by the way, that's an odd one. How could you have a guy who's interviewing for head coaching jobs that yeah, might lose his really, current job? Yeah. yeah. Aren't they saying the same thing about the enemy too? That he may not be back in Kansas City because it was there was some question he was going to even be back last year, and then I think he's done interviews. If I'm not mistaken, this year he's done a couple, and now there's some questions he's going to be back. I I just think that I think this is also pretty damning of Russell Wilson. Because Dan Quinn... You should be running. Coaches should be clamoring to coach it, Russell Wilson and, by the way, and this Denver Broncos team. It, yeah, Dan Quinn was part of that staff that coached Russell Wilson in Seattle. He was the defensive That's coordinator true. when they won that Super that Bowl. That is true. So, so fact, he's familiar yeah, with Russ. The, the fact that he looks at it and goes, nah. hell no. Yeah, even all the, <laughs> all the money they've got. All like, the, let me see what y'all got here. Let me think. Hey, uh, let me see. Uh, that office hell Russell has no. must be some really big, nice office. What do you it think? must be the nicest one in there. Okay, do you do you think do you think Russell Wilson has a picture of Russell Wilson in Russell Wilson's office? Uh, like multiples. Oh, okay. Yeah, like all over <laughs> him and him and I mean him and the family. You like, have to assume. Yeah, like, what do you, what do you like what, now? What kind of pictures are we talking about? Is it shirtless? No, there's, st- I mean, maybe some. Okay, maybe some. Like you know, like during the pregnancy. Hey, um, Seattle, we got a deal. Yeah, no, yeah. you don't. Mm. <laughs> Seattle, you, you yes, got. Yes, they do. Hey, Seattle, you got a high draft pick. Is what you got. Mm. That that's what you got <laughs> in Seattle. It's time for y'all to go to bed. <laughs> Mm. So, like, the fact that he didn't even want any part of it. Hey, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out. Because the the owners of the Broncos could offer more than anybody else, correct? As far as the team's available, like, they can they can write a check for any amount to bring whatever coach they want in. So the fact that, you know, Dan yeah. Quinn looked at that and was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, you, you, have, to, you have to keep in mind, again, the, the coach's salaries are not subject to the salary cap. And so it really comes down to how much money you want to allocate to your coach. How much do you value – the job that he does. And that's essentially what, you know, anyone would have to decide who wants to hire Sean Payton. Cause he's already floated out there at 20, 25 million. Like, you know, the asking price going into it. And that that's, he's another interesting one you got to talk about as far as it's, it's looking like a reality. He might not, you know, coach, he might just go back into, uh, into broadcasting again. 